Tonight on Let It Rip. I thought this was the best deal we could get, an important deal for us to get over the finish line. Is if Republicans just hold out for a few more weeks, we will be in control. Battle lines drawn as a shutdown looms. Democrats racing the clock trying to get a bill to the president's desk before heading home for the holiday. But Republicans are in no hurry to get across the finish line. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell joins us from D.C. with what's at stake. Plus... Nobody before, much less a president, had ever come so close to overthrowing the presidential election. It's a waste of time, a waste of taxpayers' money. A referral for charges against former President Trump by a House committee investigating the January 6th insurrection. Why some say it's a continued witch hunt, while others say it's time for justice. And so it's time to let it rip right now. $1.7 trillion. That's a pretty big check that right now Congress has its hands on. Will they actually pass this so that the spending bill will be passed? Joining us now, Rocky Rutschkowski. He, of course, is the chair of the Oakland County GOP. Former, former chair. Former well, chair. Start no, again. Actually. Start again. Well, former, chair. former chair. Oh, Sorry. Former chair. Former majority leader. Just, just say about, former right? majority leader. No, form, no, no, no. Former chair. Majority. majority leader is you the were. key. Yeah, a long yeah, time ago. But that's ago. the key. I understand. 30 years ago. All right. That no, was a long please. time ago. 30 years. <laughs> Sons of bitches. You should bring Kwame Kilpatrick here and say you're former chair. Oh, nice, nice. Back to Let It Rip. We're joined by Rocky Rutschkowski, the former head of the GOP at Oakland County, and also Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, just on the eve of the big vote, of course, talking about uh, the spending bill. But we also want to talk about former President Trump, uh, Charlie Langton, our legal attorney, with us as well to chat about this. We're going to start with the Congresswoman. Uh, you have your hand literally on the pulse of what's going on in Washington. The January 6th Commission, and then you got the taxes. Talk about what's most important to you. Getting his tax returns or figuring out what happened on 1-6? On I think it's very important that the American people realize the danger to democracy that happened on January 6th. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, I, I think that every president should have to make their tax returns uh, available publicly, and I think there'll be an effort to do that going forward. But I think that our democracy was threatened, was under attack, and we never want to see that happen in this country again, and that we need to understand that we cannot take our democracy for granted and that we all have a responsibility, no matter what our political views, where we are, to protect that democracy. We are the greatest country in the world, and we can never take that for granted. Anytime anything happens in this country that's, uh, that wasn't supposed to happen, that hurt people, whether it be 9-11 or Hurricane Katrina, the government puts on a commission to chat about what happened. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Congresswoman, are you hopeful that this will be, something will come out of this, or do you think it's just kind of a way to uh, establish precedent so it doesn't happen again? I think that a lot of people, look, I never underestimate, I wanna say something right now, Donald Trump, he still has a lot of people that support him in this country. But I think that a lot of facts that have come out here have come out about what happened that day. I really think that a lot of people don't realize that there was an organized, some people came to Washington to express their support of Donald Trump. They voted for him and they were expressing their support. But there were people inside of that group who came with weapons, came prepared to kill people. There were key people that died that day. There were people whose lives will never be the same from law enforcement. And that it is forced people, Republicans and Democrats, to really think about how lucky we are to be Americans and what this democracy means, and that we need to treat each other with respect and more civility. Rocky, I want to bring you the way, fold I, here. I concur. I, I, I concur with yeah. what Debbie mentioned, but it would have been nice if if the uh, Democrats in the House would have at least allowed Kevin McCarthy to offer the members from the Republican side to be on that committee. And when they didn't, uh, you know, the Republicans walked off except for two in Kinzinger and, and Cheney. Cheney and was there. We, well, yeah, was yeah. But what yeah, would have, what 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 would have changed uh, if, if had there been some Republican involvement? I think if you would have had Jim Jordan or Kramer on there, you would have had individuals that would be asking the tough questions and diving deeper into what really caused January 6th instead of just a witch hunt against President Trump. What was one of the, what, what, what was the question that you should have been asked in your mind? Uh, why why wasn't there more police when we knew when uh, the speaker Pelosi knew that there was going to be a potential uh, violence and potential problems at the Capitol? Why didn't she call in more police? Why wasn't the National Guard called out much earlier for when the speaker has that authority? That's one of the big questions. Rocky, would one Rocky. six have happened if President Trump hadn't done that speech? 
I, I, I can't tell you. I, what are I your am, thoughts, though? What do you think? You know, I, I didn't like the speech at the Ellipse. I really didn't. I mean, if you're talking about breaking news, I wasn't a big fan of that. And I've been on record stating that I think that individuals that stormed the Capitol and that did some of the things that they did should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I, I think if we're going to be a party of rule of law, we need to be supporting rule of law. I go for but again, Trump too? Exa- for anyone, anyone, I don't care if you're the president, we don't have royalty. That's what's so great about this Constitution. We don't have royalty in this country. I mean, you may be a dingle and, and be like royalty. By the way, that's a compliment. No, I, that's a compliment. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it, the, the issue here is we don't have royalty and everybody should be treated the same way. And by the way, those people that stormed are not all Republicans. They're individuals that obviously had grievances and Ill, ill-placed criminality already set in their mind. To, to do on that specific you don't day. Break things, though. You don't yeah, the Republican there. Party doesn't condone to, that's that. That's not the way to make your point. I agree that's with right. everyone here. I think we all agree that those people should be prosecuted. <clears throat> I think the issue today, though, is how much does the Democrats really want to pursue this President Trump issue? Now it's going to go to the Justice Department, I understand, to review from this committee. I don't know what the Justice Department is going to do. From a p- legal point of view, I would hate to bring charges, go through the arraignment process, yeah. and bring the, a former president where on a case that is maybe is not supported to the best extent. You don't want to do that. You want to try a case you're going to lose. This to me seems a lot of political, a lot, theater. too much political. Political, theater. political yeah. theater. I'll agree with that. And so at this point in time, Thank you. I think just let Trump go. He's not but going to you do know what? I'd like divide to, the I'd party. I'd like to ask Debbie. He's going to divide the Republican Party. Well, a procedural question. And Debbie, is it possible for the new House, the, the, the Republicans to take over in the new year, for them to basically withdraw that committee's recommendation to the Department of Justice? Is that possible? So I'm going to say several things. First of all, Rocky, I too have a question about why we were not more prepared. Where was the National Guard? But when you read the January 6th commission, that question was looked at, was answered. And I will also make a point that people begged the president, including Republicans and the vice president of the United States. And his own children. To call out the National Guard and did not for several hours. Yeah. But... um, I think this, look, it is up to the Attorney General, the Justice Department, about what they will do. So while this committee has made that recommendation, they don't, it, it will be at a total independent decision by the Justice Department. And I think that we have an Attorney General who is very uh, focused, is going to be very careful and very cautious before he does anything. And very partisan. <laughs> Feelings about it. While, <laughs> this, while this may be political theater, according to some, Rocky, I have to ask yeah. you this question. There are some Republicans within the party who still till this day, so many months afterwards, still till this day, will say things like, what are we worried about? It was a bunch of people waving flags. It was a little broken glass. Do you think that they're misguided in their undermining of such a terrible event that happened? And do you think they would feel the same way if it was Antifa running through the Capitol? I I think, listen, I've I've been very clear about this. I wasn't a big fan of the Summer of Love. I wasn't a big fan when Antifa and BLM attacked the White House and hit a, if you remember, in the summer, in June or July, they hit a Secret Service member with a brick on his head. And I'm not a big fan of of anyone that attacks or or creates violence, mayhem, or attacks a federal building. and I will stand with Debbie on that and, and again continue to say those people should be prosecuted. I don't care if they're from the left or from the right, but we live in a free country and people have the right to their free ideas and their opinions. But it's up to us to make sure that people know the truth. And for me, I'm very open about where I stand on, on January 6th. Do you think it should be Trump, DeSantis? Pence? Who should be the I'm, next I'm guy a for big the GOP? Fan. Listen, President Trump did a lot, and I was on his team the first time, before anybody else was, and on the second time. And I was on his national campaign team. But when looking at, I want someone with fresh blood, someone that, that can cross across the aisle and convince Democrats to vote for him, like Ronald Reagan. Remember, we were the home of Macomb County. That was the home of Reagan Democrats, right? And, and would win places like Michigan, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Georgia. And I'm looking for somebody that can do two terms and somebody that has military experience and so forth. But someone, I look who at carries him, someone who carries himself with a little more couth and a little more decency, according to many. Uh, again, this for former me, former President Trump didn't have those things, and he certainly, after 1-6, has I think shown, a lot of people, yeah. I'll, you'll even ask Republicans, and, and I've said this publicly, Republicans will say, boy, I wish he wouldn't say that. But in some other times, we applaud him for having the chutzpah 
and, and the intestinal fortitude to, to put it into, into his enemy's face. He's a counterpuncher. We love counterpunchers, but at the same time, there's a different way of doing that. And I'm, I'm looking at people like DeSantis and Pompeo as being the future of our party and others. Congress, others. Congresswoman Dengel, we're going to give you a chance to get some final thoughts in, as well as Rocky yeah. and Charlie. That's coming up after the break. $1.7 trillion. It's a hefty check, and it could just be written very, very soon if this Congress decides to pass this spending bill. Joining us now to talk about it, the one and only Rocky Rutschkowski, the <laughs> former head of the GOP, of course, the chair Good here evening. in uh, Oakland County. We thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Charlie Langton, anchor and attorney, and joining us all the way from Washington right now. Well, we're talking about one of the women of the hour. We're talking about Congresswoman Debbie Dingell. She joins us live as well from Washington. We thank you for joining us, Congresswoman. Let's start with you. 4,155 pages is as long as this thing is. Have you read the whole thing and what's in it? <laughs> Listen, the bill is still being enrolled and hasn't made it to the House. Uh, so I'm a little frustrated and I think... Uh, uh, Rocky, I love your friends, but your friends don't seem to in a hurry to get home for Christmas. Because they want but to do the I, right thing. Well, we nice. do need to do the right thing. And I've spent a long time talking to members of the Appropriations Committee and to the senators who took their time uh, acting to make sure we do know what's in the bill and what the general guide, uh, outlines are. And um, there's some things in it that I really wanted, and there's some things not in it that we really wanted. Well, let's, but, let's talk, Congresswoman, for a moment to the people at home right now who are just trying to put food on the table and have been huh. struggling through this and are trying to figure out, you know, what is in this 4,000-page bill. <clears throat> I want to turn the table to Rocky for a moment to talk about doing the right thing. You said that's what Republicans sure. want to do right now. $1.7 trillion government spending bill, $45 billion of that going to Ukraine. Any issue with that? Uh, not so much with the Ukraine, but again, there's got to be some accountability there. But the key is we need to talk about doing the right thing. We shouldn't be holding an omnibus bill, which is a, a bill that has everything thrown into it at the end of a year. There should be a process, and it's written in the Constitution, where the House creates the budget, and it should be done through the proper budgetary process with the committee chairmen and the committees to do their work. What's going wrong here? The Senate and the House and the Democrats putting on uh, every single little earmark that they can put on and creating a $1.7 trillion budget and holding us hostage till the end of the year. We know that there's a lot of money going into some other stuff, for instance. We know there's $15 billion uh, kind of going into some of these earmarked issues. Sure. Uh, Congresswoman Dingell, there's one a uh, hiking trail uh, in Georgia for <laughs> Michelle Obama named after her. I know there's another one uh, that's an LGBTQ museum. And regardless of where you lie on the political or the socio-political right. scale here, you got to ask the question, is this something that the American people want to pay for? What are your thoughts when you hear about that Obama hiking trail in that museum? So, first of all, I want to make it really clear that in the House, we have passed an appropriation bill of every single subcommittee. And I, while I would like to say that a number of Republicans have not been cooperating, Rocky, I got to tell you, the United States Senate is where bills go to die. It takes too long for them to act, and we should not be in this situation, nor should we be in a situation where the government should shut down. I agree with you. you Tell Schumer to start doing it the right way. But you're, yesterday, it was Lindsey Graham who told me, as he came in for the President Zelensky's speech, that the whole thing was falling apart. And it was Senator Lee, a Republican last I heard, that was holding the whole bill hostage. So let, Be, I don't want to hear your Because of border, because of border, every, because of border security. Rocky, and we should talk a little bit about that. Every single term, this, we go down to the last, right to the wire. Not only in the federal, we but in the be. state as well. We well, shouldn't be. In a perfect world. But this is not any different than, and, than it's ever been before. Right, Debbie? I mean, there's been there's been bills that have gone right to the wire and the government shut down for a little bit of time. Nobody wants to see that. Well, does anybody remember what it was like in 218 and 219 where we actually shut the we government down for down. almost yeah. three months? We made TSA officers work over the holidays and not get paid. It was a tragedy, and we should never do that again. It's irresponsible to shut our government down. Now, I want to go back to the community improvement projects. And... Each member is allowed to submit. It gets considered by the Appropriations Committee. We got it like, for, for the projects that I got, we're going to get PFAS. We got a whole remediation project that's going to be in the Great Lakes Water Authority. We, I can go through a number of very critical projects, electric 
vehicle infrastructure at Washington Community College, uh, Grozillo, a waste a sewer system. I mean, these no, are no, the no, guys listen, are listen, Debbie, working. Debbie, working. Debbie, a lot it's of the, the when you talk about the PFAS remediation, absolutely that's a government requirement. But when you start talking about throwing six million dollars into salmon, investigating and and looking how salmon spawn up a river, that's ridiculous. Well, let's talk. And, and by the way, let me let me get back to one of the biggest, most egregious. Republicans spending. don't like that issue. Well, I guess the, we're not interested in salmon yeah, spawning. Apparently not. But no. but uh, the the big issue here, and Debbie, this is something that I'd like to hear because uh, from from the House and from the Senate is that you've got money over 300 or 400 million, excuse me, close to a billion. It was 786 million dollars being spent on these sanctuary cities where people are being sent to help them feed, shelter illegal illegal uh, immigrants. And no money is being spent in Florida or Arizona or Texas, where a lot of them are coming as well. And, and okay, let's take this on for a minute. Now, first of all, I'm going to say something to you, Rocky. Yeah. Those states refuse to take any money. I think that we, well, we need should be dealing to, with this issue in the oh, first no, place. Let her, let her we finish. need let to finish. do something about immigration. Period. Yeah, build a wall. And the lack of Republicans being willing to do something or to move forward on it. Our small businesses are screaming right now at the end of the year to do something. Republicans and Democrats for decades are afraid to deal with this issue. It's politically toxic. Wait, and I, I don't understand. This country, and we need Debbie, to do something. And you and I should work together to say absolutely, to everybody, absolutely. Absolutely. Something about immigration. So Absolutely, Rocky, but Rocky, what do you mean by Rocky, small needs- business worried about immigration? Why is small business a concern here? Because they can't get the workers that they need. The ah, then maybe the we should workers. do welfare reform, and we should really do proper vetting of the people that come in here. But most of the people that are coming through this border unchecked, you've got fentanyl coming through, you've got people that are dying, women that are being so raped on the border. But Rocky, no, we Rocky. need to properly, we need to come back to being a nation of laws. But Rocky, do it. Rocky, also, if that immigration, if, if immigration is, is, the flow gets better, we know, for instance, in Mackinac right now, they're dealing with a lack of workers, of people who come from other countries, of Jamaica, other places where they don't have the workforce to keep these restaurants and hotels afloat. Don't you think there's something needs to be done to make sure that this can be done so people we, have the workers they need? We have the, the issue there is migrant workers and we have migrant visas for people that, that employ individuals, uh, farmers and, and the individuals in, in Mackinac. And that's up to them to recruit hey, Robin, those migrant I'm, workers. I'm, but I'm talking about people that are crossing the border. The cartels are in charge of this border, Debbie. The cartels are in charge. And if you tell me they're not, that's a ridiculous lie. Yeah, this is a spending bill, isn't it? You don't want to have the entire legislative session in a, in a couple of weeks here before the end of the term, do you? This is something that can be debated throughout the guess, year. Guess but what? Try to keep the government open, no, right? No, you, you do a continuing resolution like they did. They're going to keep the government open until January okay, or Rocky, January 1st. The issue and, then, and then let the new Hold House on, members, let. let the new House members, Debbie, you, you've got Republicans coming in, let the new House members show the, uh, the the Senate how it's done. But there's a lot of people who say the okay, Republicans right. want to delay in order to get the power that they want the majority in the House in order to take care of business their they way. Should. Is that the, is that fair? I think so. Absolutely. Right. Oh, Can, wait do, a minute. Rocky, yeah. this, this Congress was elected two years ago. It's this year that we're working in. But I want to ask you a question. One of the reasons this bill is so important, you who do support the military and the veterans, is because there's a significant increase for the men and women who are serving this country. I do. Republicans have already made clear that they will not support. We Listen, are not taking care of the men and women who keep us safe every no, day. No, no, no. Let's 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 backtrack. This- you can't make that statement because let's backtrack. I can this defense and will. budget. This defense budget is grossly, and this is coming from a veteran who understands the Defense Department of the Pentagon. Way, it's grossly for- too <laughs> large. It's eight hundred and fifty-six billion dollars. It's more than half of this entire omnibus budget. And as a veteran, you're saying that's too much money to spend on the military? Well, it, listen, if we talk about veterans, it, veterans come out of VA, not out of the Defense but, Department. But, but too much money being spent on the military. Well. Yes, because we need accountability in what the Pentagon's doing. We need accountability in the military, and we need to make sure that the military stops doing social programs and starts going back to what it's supposed to be done, it's supposed to be doing, and it's defending our country. Congresswoman, I want to ask you about this uh, $27 billion in disaster funding and also the overhaul of election reform, yeah. uh, the, the law to prevent presidents or someone who's running for president to try to overturn an election. Spell that out kind for the people important. watching right now. 
So, I mean, actually, Republic, there were Republicans that agreed with this, and the yeah. Senate worked very hard to get this done in a bipartisan way this year that we never see another January 6th. I don't, the report is, full report is supposed to come out today, but it, to people that are trying to be objective and look at the facts, the fact is it appears that this president was trying to keep the uh, votes from the election two years ago for president uh, from being approved. What happened at January 6th, there were people that came to the Capitol ready to kill people that wanted to keep the uh, incredible election. You heard from the Arizona speaker of the House. You heard from people across the country, the pressure that was put into the put on them to lie about election results. We should never, ever, ever, as a nation and a democracy, be subject to that kind of uh, pressure or threats again. And this bill was a bipartisan bill. It's a bipartisan effort, though. It is a bipartisan yeah, effort, but, but Congress, but Congress again, for, put for, policy and budget. We're going to talk about, well, because we're talking about preventing something like that from happening again. It's not just policy. It's preventing a terrible act of... Yeah, but you're putting policy in a budget bill. But, but it, let me ask it, you listen, this. I, I don't disagree with... Budgets uh, we are should, Listen, January 6th, should, I, I'm very clear, January 6th should have never happened. And those individuals that did break the law should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. When we take a look at what else is in that bill, what's missing for you, Rocky? Well, what's missing is fiscal discipline, I think. Fiscal but outside discipline. of your complaints about what's yeah. in there, what's missing? What is there something that you wish was in there? I, I really, I, I think that in, in the big retrospect, the spending has the spending that we should have as far as government, as far as infrastructure, our courts, making sure that government's running, uh, funding our military. Uh, what, what I think the biggest, if you're asking me one big thing that's missing, is our border protection. Instead of spending money on taking care of these individuals here, we should be enforcing the stay in Mexico or stay in the first country you get to. And that's, we should be enforcing our borders. And finally, Congresswoman, before we get to our next segment about former President Trump and where he stands right now in, in the world of politics, a little bit about your thoughts. I know I asked you this before, but I didn't get an answer. A hiking trail named after Michelle Obama, yeah. an LGBTQ museum. Uh, those are things, again, regardless of where you stand on these issues, that some people are sitting there going, I'm trying to put food on the table. Gas prices are still pretty high. And that's what you're concerned about? Do you think some of the Democrats are misguided in their priorities as opposed, and not a line with what the American people want. So first of all, let me, I, that's yes. what I was talking about when I talked about community improvement projects. That's what these are. And uh, each member is allowed to submit a certain number of projects. I don't have the details on those projects. That hiking trail may be very important to the community that's there and they decided to name it after uh, Michelle Obama. And I, quite frankly, I think the LGBT community has been under attack these last few years. I don't have the details because that, you know, I focus my uh, dollars on some really significant projects in the 12th district that on um, environmental issues and mental health issues, uh, et cetera. But uh, members are allowed to fight for things in their district. You may disagree with what a member fought for, but I think that uh, getting that cut, like, that Great Lakes Water Authority needed that PFAS money. They've been that's, trying to that's get that's it. That's a needed thing. 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 lives are on the line with that. Well, we're going to the TikTok TikTok Museum is, is not, not well, something that Listen, is regardless of where you fall on all these issues, it's it's worth a question to the Congresswoman yeah. as to whether or not you think it was it's legit. And uh, obviously, this is something that we hope. Uh, final answer before we get to our next uh, break uh, here in, in our next segment. Uh, you're hopeful, obviously, that the House will pass this, yes? I hope that we will get this done. I, the government cannot shut down tomorrow right. night. Now, mm -hmm. the Senate also passed a continuing resolution to keep the government funded for another week. We will do that tomorrow, too, that I hope. But sure. it is my hope that we, we will pass this bill and not shut the government down. I think it would be irresponsible to do that. When we come back on the other side of the break, Trump's future in this country in this next election and a surprise that the guy who's standing two people away from me, what he may say may surprise you, but where he stands on Trump. We'll look at that when we come back. Stay with us. The Edge at 11 starts now. Had some technical difficulties there. We didn't have time for final thoughts. We thank our panel for joining us. 